I am Archana Tiwari. I am Associate Professor, Department of Western History, University of Lucknow, in Uttar Pradesh, India. The title of my paper is "Indian Indentured System Through the Eyes of Tota Ram Sanadhe and Bichu." Tota Ram Sanadhe belonged to Herangaon District, Firozabad, Uttar Pradesh. On the death of his father, their family assets had been deceitfully taken. by the money lenders thus his family had fallen prey to poverty he was looking for a means of livelihood when he fell prey to the small tongue smooth tongue of an arkati when he was visiting allahabad he was looking for a job in allahabad etymologically the word arkati or arkatiya may be derived from the hindi word katiya meaning bait since they that is the arkatiya baited the recruits with their smooth talks he arrived in fiji on may 28 1893 on the ship jamuna bichu went to british guiana in 1894 he was a kurmi that is he belonged to the agricultural class he was 34 years of age an orphan with no formal education but he was schooled by one Mrs Cameron a white lady of a Scottish presbyterian mission he was in a state of destitution when he met an arkati who promised pichu a living if he agreed to crossing the seas he wanted to go to trinidad as he was misinformed that period of indentureship in trinidad was just 3 years bichu went to british guiana on the ship sheila and landed on december 20 1894 the reason being once in the clutches of an arkati it was difficult for bichu to go free most probably bichu was asked to pay expenses for his food clothing etc thus he had to give his consent to go to british guiana thus it can be said that both tota ram sanadh and bichu were indentured against their will Bichu was indentured to plantation and more east coast demerara there are a number of similarities between tota ram sanadh and bichu both of them went to british colonies they went almost at the same time tota ram sanadh in 1893 and bichu in 1894 none of them was a farm worker both raised the issue of the pathetic condition of indian women in the state which was an important issue that led to the abolition of indian indentured system the writings of both qualify as subaltern literature however there are also a number of differences between tota ram sanadh and bichu tota ram sanadh belonged to uttar pradesh whereas bichu belonged to bengal politically and nationally conscious state of india Tota Ram Sanadh had a family, whereas Bichu had been orphaned at an early age. Tota Ram Sanadh completed his indenture and stayed in Fiji for twenty-one years, whereas Bichu was found physically unfit for a strenuous manual labor. He worked as an assistant to a Creole driver, like manuring and superintending picking of cane tops. he could not complete his indenture as he suffered from bouts of fever through exposure to sun and rain so he was assigned domestic duties at the manager's house again the accounts of tota ram sanadh qualify as source of oral history when he returned to india in 1915 he related his ordeal of 21 years in fiji to pandit banarsi das chaturvedi whereas bichu's contribution to the newspaper and his testimony as the lone indian representative for he could converse in english the west before the west, uh, west india royal commission that is the norman commission in 1897 all these documents were edited by professor clem sri charan in 1997 that is after 100 years The writings of Tota Ram Sanadh are significant in a number of ways. On his return to India in April 1914, after a stay of 21 years, Tota Ram Sanadh stayed in Dharamtala, 
Calcutta for a month. Through his speeches, Tota Ram launched a scathing attack on the will ills of the endangered labor system. Later, Tota Ram Sanate met Pandit Banarsi Das Chaturvedi. Coincidentally, even Pandit Chaturvedi was from Ferozabad. He championed the cause of indentured Indians through his writings in Hindi literature. Since Tota Ram Sanade lacked formal education, he was reluctant to pen down his autobiography. So Pandit Chaturvedi decided to take dictation as Tota Ram narrated his memoirs. In this way, the historic book, Fiji Dweep Me Mere Ikkis Varsh, the book used as publicity material in the anti-indentured labor campaign was born. Fiji Dweep Me Mere Ikkis Varsh acquired the fame of Uncle Tom Skaven. While publishing Fiji Dweep Me Mere Ikkis Varsh, Pandit Banarsi Das had included only those incidents of Sanadhyas life which would serve to arouse public opinion in the anti-indentured campaign. The book was translated in many Indian languages like Marathi, Gujarati, and Urdu. An English translation was done under the supervision of C.F. Andrews. Sanad had toured a number of Indian cities, Lahore, Ambala, and Mathura, and gave lectures against indenture system. He participated in the Madras session in 1914 of the Indian National Congress as the representative of Fiji. Sri F.G. Natesan moved the resolution for the total prohibition of recruitment of endangered labor. On December 30, 1914, the resolution was seconded by Tota Ram Sanade in Hindustani. While narrating his life story, Tota Ram Sanade had also told about the social, cultural, religious aspects of the infant Indian community in Fiji and relations of Indians with the natives in Fiji. Pandit Banarsi Das Chaturvedi had omitted these aspects in Fiji Dweep Me Mere Ek Varsh. In 1955, Pandit Chaturvedi handed over the unpublished manuscript to Dr. K. L. Gillian, who used some of the narration of Tota Ram in his book, Fiji's Indian Migrants, A History to the End of Indenture in 1920. Dr. Gillian gave the manuscript to his research scholar, Bridge V. Lal. This manuscript was published in 1994 uh, under the title Bhut Lane Ki Katha. Tota Ram Sanade Ka Fiji with Bridgevilal and Rik Yogendra Yadav as co-editors. In 2007-08, Dr. Rashutosh Kumar met Dr. Bridgevilal in Australia with the consent of Dr. Bridgevilal. Dr. Rashutosh Kumar jointly edited the manuscript. Uh, this was told personally to the author. And the result was Bhut Lane Ki Katha, Girmit Ke Anubhav in 2012. The writings and testimony of Bichu are equally important. Bichu stands out among the indentured labor for two main reasons. As documents and records till date show, Bichu is the only indentured labor who was well-versed in English. He was the only Indian to have testified before the West Indian Royal Commission, 1897, a natural outcome of his knowledge of English language. The voice of con conscience, as Basudev Mangru called him, an indefatigable gadfly, this term was used by Clem C. Charan for Bichu. Bichu challenged colonial society with fearlessness and inflexibility and was the embodiment of rebellious spirit against the British colonial system. Bichu's life was embedded in Christian principles. His letters were frequently laced with biblical references. His faith was shaped by theology, benevolent work pursued by various Christian denominations in Calcutta. Bengal was the pulse of New India. Bichu belonged to the land of Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Keshav Chandra Sen, Bankim Chand Chatterjee, and Rabin Nattagore. A year before Bichu came to India, Viveka Nand, on September 11, 1893, had delivered his famous address at the World's Parliament of Religions at Chicago. The world was exposed to the glory of Vedantic philosophy through an Indian, rather through the translated work of a Western intellectual. It appears that A. 
Rohoman had paid for his commutation fee. That is why he could uh, be free and uh, get out of his indenture uh, contract. He stayed for 14, uh, he stayed at 14 Water Street, Georgetown, the premises of A. Rohoman and Company, founded in 1893. Rohoman acquiesced in the activities of uh, Bichu as the champion of poor and illiterate compatriots. Bichu contributed to the Daily Chronicle, that is the newspaper, between March 1897 and February or March 1901. He did not hide behind a pseudonym as was the usual practice then. His incisive criticism of the various aspects of indentured labor laced with sarcasm and biblical references shook the elite classes in British Guyana out of their inertia. The sharp criticism of indentured system by Bichu was mainly centered on the following, long working hours, heavy task work, inhumane treatment of the sick labor, deplorable housing conditions and drainage system, the farcical visits of the immigration agent general and his district immigration agents to the sugar estates, deplorable condition of Indian women on the estates, subjection of the Indian coolies through abuses and threats, the main reason for low number of complaints against their employers. One significant of Pichu was his assertion before the West Indian Trial Commission 1897 about the numerical that numerically British Guyana had enough number of immigrants to work on the sugar states than needed. He boldly asserted that the main cause behind the insistence of the planters for more indentured labor was simply to depress the wages among all categories of labor. The import of indentured labor enabled the planters command over both indentured and free labor. The discontinuation of the indentured labor would translate into increase of wages for free Indians on the state. The planters continued to import indentured labor and yet could not guarantee work on the states for everyone. The various indicators in the sugar industry, wages, prices, etc., were clearly indicating that there was no labor shortage in the sugar states. It was the obsession of the planters for docile, unfree labor, which could be made to work under conditions of slavery, a practice outlawed in 1893, 1833. The planter class was still clinging to slavery in changed world scenario. The courageous opposition of indentured system by both Tota Ram Sanat and Bichu clearly exposed the obstinate attitude of those who were well entrenched in power. The rich and the aristocratic classes have great influence on the government and policy making. The affluent classes and the government turned a blind eye on the forebodings of their times, causing immeasurable pain and problems to the ordinary, clueless and destitute people who were tossed like straws in the air by their policies. Thank you.